So for those wondering what my office looks like, this is what it looks like. So I did actually have a few people ask, so I figured I'd just quickly show you all. Pretty much I've just got my curve monitor there. That's where I do the majority of my work. I have a secondary screen there on my actual computer, which is just a 2020 MacBook Pro, 16 inch. Uh, Blue Yeti mic, which I used to use for my podcast, which I do now if I'm invited on a podcast as a guest, or I'll use that for my voiceovers when I do my training vlogs. Should be in focus. Uh, welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in again. This is gonna be a training vlog, just like the last few videos that I have uploaded. However, I just wanted to do a little bit of a different style of an intro to vary things up a little bit so it's not just the same stock standard. As soon as you go into the video and start playing it, it's just me training in the gym. This is my humble abode, my man cave, so to speak. It is my office where I do all my online coaching. That's where I study. And it is also where I do all my video editing and got my um, bookshelf over there. I haven't read all the books. A lot of them are just ones that I kind of peruse through and maybe read one or two chapters and then put it back on the shelf. The way I see a book is you don't have to read every book you own front to back. Sometimes you'll buy a book for the sole purpose of reading one of the chapters. The way I approach reading any book is I'll have the intention of, I wanna learn this or I wanna learn that, and I'll find a book on that topic. And that book on that topic might cover a plethora of other things, but if I'm only wanting to learn one specific thing, I'll just read that one specific chapter. But that aside, a little bit of off tangent rambling. Now this video is gonna be an upper body training session. So the way I have my training laid out at the moment is I have kind of like a body part split for the first three days of the week, rest day on Thursday, and then I dive into a upper body session and then a lower body session. So my first session of the week in the body part split is an arm focused session. My second training session of the week on Tuesday is a chest and delt focused session. And then Wednesday is my posterior day, which is my back and hamstrings day. And you'll notice that I don't really do quads in the body part split, and that's because my quads don't need a lot of volume to grow or maintain, and I don't need to really add a lot of size to my quads to maintain a balanced, classic kind of look. So then I have my rest day Thursday, still do active stuff on that day, like I'll go for my morning walk or midday walk, that sort of thing, still clock up around eight to 10,000 steps on a rest day. And um, yeah, then I dive into my upper body training session, which is on the Friday, and obviously, lower body on Saturday. But yeah, uh, I did record the entire training session. I'm going to play the footage now and I will let you watch that. Okay, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different with uh, today's voiceover for this training vlog. And I wanted to address a topic which doesn't get a lot of discussion, I guess. I mean, there are people out there talking about it and there, there are a lot of uh, well-educated coaches and athletes out there that do already implement this thought process when structuring their training but I figured I'd just touch on it a little bit in this video to make it hopefully a little bit more widespread to anybody who might be following me and uh, interested in understanding how to better structure their training uh, to suit or, or to, to be tailored towards them and their needs because how you lay out your upper body training session depending on your goals is going to be completely different from the next person if their goals are not the same as yours so the general consensus is you do your biggest hard heavy compound movements first in your session if you're doing a multi-body part session then you work your way down the ladder through the less complex or less demanding exercises until you get to the very end of the session where you're just doing the what people call pump and fluff stuff like your tricep push downs your rear delt flies, your lateral raises, your bicep curls. But if there's no specific goal in mind or there's no specific body part that you really want to prioritize, that's perfectly fine. You can structure your training session like that. But if you have a specific body part that you're wanting to bring up or a uh, lagging body part that you want to give more attention towards, uh, or simply if you have a less responsive part of your upper body that you want to have um, grow at a slightly superior rate to the rest of your upper body, which tends to respond better to overall training stimulus, then the order and the amount of volume you allocate to each body part is going to vary. Uh, if you're wanting to, I suppose, I hate using the term optimize because it's impossible to do anything optimally. It's kind of like a, 
um, shooting star or an aiming target that you're always constantly trying to aim for. It's kind of like an ideal. And you never get to optimal, but you can get to very effective and very efficient or very ineffective and very inefficient, depending on how much you tailor and dial your training in or whatever it is you're doing to suit your needs and what your desired income is. So when it comes to upper body training, say for example, if you're like me and you're wanting to prioritize your chest and delts, then you probably want to have a lot of the chest and delt stuff at the start of the upper body session. Mind you, you don't have to, but if you want to give 100% effort or focus all of your attention or at least get the most productive work done for those body parts, then you're going to have a better chance of doing that if it's petitioned earlier in your session because you're going to have more energy available at the beginning of a session than you are at the end of a session. Mentally, you're going to be more focused and ready to be dialed into doing what you're doing because as you train, exhaustion accumulates, fatigue accumulates, and by the end of the session, if even if you are um, still consciously trying to focus, your ability to focus is going to be hampered to some degree. So uh, it comes back to what I mentioned in previous videos, the whole first order principle. You want to put what's priority at the top of the ladder or at the top of the um, pyramid. And that means in terms of your training session that you're doing, have it at the start. So I start my training session always with my um, chest stuff and my rear delt stuff because they're my priorities. And then I also do some lateral delt stuff after that because I still also want to bring up my lateral head. But the main areas that I'm trying to target on this day are my chest, particularly my clavicular fibers of my chest, so my upper pec, and then my rear delts. So the exercises that involve those muscles the most are positioned at the start of the session. It's that simple. Um, so if you're structuring your training session to focus on a weak point or to delegate more overall work towards a certain body part, then the way you should probably structure it is if if your weak point, let's just say something different to mine, if your weak point's back, then you better not have your back training in the middle of your session or at the very end of your session. You should probably have it towards the start of your session. It doesn't have to be the very, very beginning or I mean, it, it, ideally it should, but you could have some sort of different exercise at the very beginning of the session if you want to do one. Uh, but I would definitely recommend putting your back stuff at the very start of your training session if back is your priority. And if you're being coached by somebody and you haven't voiced that a certain body part is your priority, uh, then I highly recommend that you voice that to them because then they can obviously restructure and reorganize the order of your training to suit your requirements and needs as an individual uh, because we can all follow a training program and all see results like that is not deniable that is it is not refutable it's irrefutable like we can all follow the same training program and see or yield some positive outcome but in order to amplify that positive outcome or to optimize there that, that word is again I, I hate it I said it though uh, then you need to arrange your training in a way that aligns with that. So have your back training at the start of your session if your back is your weak point. Um, that might involve doing some sort of a lighter exercise first to prime the muscle and then going into a harder movement. So you might do something like a, a lat pullover, like one working set of lat pullovers just as a priming movement, uh, doing it to about two to three reps in reserve. So you're getting a a bit of recruitment of the lats, you're, you're getting that mind to muscle connection, attentional focus in that area that you're about to hammer with heavier stuff. Then you might go into a heavy row. Then you might go into like a single arm pull down or some other variation of a vertical row. And then you might loop all the way back around and do a uh, third and final exercise for that body part, the lat pullover, the one that you did at the start of the session. But this time you're gonna go really hard out and, and treat it like a uh, progressive movement as opposed to like a priming or a warm-up movement and then you can obviously go into all the other stuff you probably go into chest from there because chest is quite a uh, demanding muscle group to train especially if you're going to be doing some compound movements for it so if you're doing some pressing and stuff you probably want to follow that up after your back work if your back's your uh, weak body part because chest is going to require the largest amount of 
energy out of the remaining body parts in the upper body then you can go into all your smaller stuff like your, your delt work or your arm work and after you've kind of prioritized your um, weaker body part or less responsive body part it doesn't really matter so much as to the order of the rest of the stuff in your training for that session um, it still has some merit in regards to how you arrange it but nowhere near as much once you've covered the the priority of the session so to speak so that's how i'd recommend structuring your upper body training if you're going to try personalize the the session for you as an individual uh, because a lot of people either can't afford a coach or don't want to invest in a coach and they might buy a generic program off the uh, internet and if you do do that understand that program is very generic and if you want to tailor your training more to suit your own unique needs then you're probably going to have to not necessarily follow the program but use it as a guide and restructure the exercise order uh, but if you've got a coach and y your training doesn't seem to align with your weak body part or your weak points that you want to be focusing on and prioritizing then either voice that with your coach uh, because chances are they probably are not aware that that is your focus at this current point in time or uh, ask your coach a question ask them why the exercise order is the way it is um, and a lot of the time they'll they'll have a valid reason as to why um, but if you haven't voiced that you want to focus on a specific body part then your coach has probably written your training clock in a way which is going to be quite standard in in exercise arrangement and order um, to, to best suit most individuals needs um, and not necessarily be focusing on any specific body part rather just overall general hypertrophy which is fine uh, and I mean if I myself as a coach don't have my client reach out to me and say hey this is the body part I really want to focus on well I will structure their training and their training sessions in their training program uh, accordingly uh, basically prioritizing general overall hypertrophy uh, but if they come to me and say hey I really want to focus on my quads then I'll be all right sweet we're gonna be training them this many times a week this is how your training session is gonna be and I'll have it structured differently like if I have a person who wants to focus on their hamstrings or a person who wants to focus on their quads then the way I structure their lower body sessions or they're just training for the entire week in general is going to be entirely different um, not necessarily different in terms of the exercise is used sometimes it is but a lot of the time two people with two varying goals can run pretty much identical programs just with uh, a different exercise order implemented and, and slightly different amounts of volume allocated towards different body parts um, coaching is always tailored and personalized to suit the individual and their needs but doesn't necessarily mean that every aspect of the sessions and the training block is going to be unique to each individual and that there concludes the voiceover for this video guys if you did enjoy it please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell icon to get notified of new uploads until the next video guys peace